Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I am coming to you from the shop and I'm excited to discuss my new black spindle connector. Now this connector is what's known as a straight shock connector. Many of you may not be aware of what that means. So I'm going to cover that in detail in this video. You can see we have our soldering cups right here to connect the leads to. And if you look carefully, you can see they're arced, actually cupping the leads where the lead would actually sit in right here. And you can see how there's just that slight arc. And then if you wanted to attach the other two, you'd rotate the connector and attach the other two leads here. Now, why is this connector so significant? Well, many of you have this black connector. And like many of the HY connectors, here's an H17. You can see the small white head on this. And if we come over here, the standard HY connectors have cups that simply articulate to the top, meaning they're going to take your leads and place them right on top of one another. So to give you a better visual of what I'm talking about, if we were to place this in the location, and this is just my DX flexion, just a simulated piece, to show you, if you have to solder, you can see you have an over-under technique. You can't solder from the bottom because you can see that the cups make it virtually impossible to heat that connector to where you can get that conductor once again to bond with solder properly, okay? So this connector is much more difficult to solder on. The other thing is, you can see when I'm holding the connector here in a perfect world, we would solder this to where this connector is perfectly perpendicular to the cable. So that once we go to rotate on these uh, the connector's casing, it would just screw right on without interfering. Many of you guys have had problems with that in the past. The thing about these HY connectors, and again, here's the large HY connector that's white. You have the same thing. You have the cups, once again, that are following that same pattern. Once again, giving you that same issue of being able to solder in over-under format. Now, this one's really unique because many of you that are just getting involved with the niche are finding out that your ground is basically diagonal of pin one. So what does that mean to you? It means it's very difficult to stretch out all of your terminals to get this cable in this position for grounding properly. But again, you can see how everything aligns, but you cannot solder without being that close in proximity to the other conductors. Well, with this connector, watch how easy this is. Being we're going top to bottom, we would just align the terminals like this. Actually, I have one right here in the vise, and I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. You have conductor here, conductor here. Once these are tacked into place, you just rotate the connector again to tack on the other two leads. This is much easier. Not only is it much easier, but what's really wonderful about this setup is the fact that once everything is soldered on, it's very easy for you guys to have a straight connector in lieu of where the cable is. And what does that mean? Well, that means that when you machine out your connector housing, and this is one that is the typical black connector housing, you can see how small that is in diameter. And then when we actually machine one out to give you the proper bore size, and what is that for? That's so we can use the proper double shielded cable. Now, you have to open that up significant so that you have clearance. Once again, everything's sitting properly, and you can see how that goes right in. So once this is soldered on and everything is set, this will come right in and screw right in without any problems as far as the cable being pitched up or being pitched down due to how the conductors are soldered. Okay? Ask me how I know this. <laughs> Ask me how I'm, I'm telling you guys all this right now because many of you out there are shaking your head and realize that's hours of practice of dealing with that same issue. There is no way around it either. Unfortunately, you either get the conductors in the proper position when you're working with cable or connectors like this H17 or you're going to have problems, especially if you've never soldered in an under uh, an underway format. When I say underway format, I'm talking about over under format with our conductors. And you can see the white lead here, black lead on the bottom, red lead here, and then you'd have your ground on the bottom. This is a very, very tricky way to solder because it's very easy to burn your casing or not get proper conduction because you don't have proper heat penetration with your soldering flux. 
Okay, that's why many of you have these issues. This connector is one that guys have had a lot of problems with. I've gotten more requests on this than virtually all the others. And it's kind of surprising because the 817 in itself is a tricky connector because we do have to machine out its body as well because you can see how small it is there. And once again, it will not accept the proper 16 gauge cable without properly machining this out. But what I find really interesting is, is that when we look at I'm just going to take this off right now so you can see the conductors. When we look at 16 gauge cable fitting inside the terminals, it fits perfect. So when guys ask me, well, why don't I use 18 gauge? Because 18 gauge is really not suitable for the amount of amps we're drawing uh, on most spindles on top of the fact that you're going to have a lot more voltage drop over length than you would with 16 gauge because you have less resistance. But you can see how that fits in there perfectly. So again, this is a good video because I feel it shows you guys a lot of what guys questions and believe you me, I get more questions on spindle cables than anything else. And speaking of which, here's a client that's done, once again using the black connector, and you can see exactly what we have. This is 10 foot. You can see how we have our stress relief here. There's the, uh, once again, the proper machine casing on the connector, and then inside here, we have Loctite placed so that these screws do not vibrate loose. On the opposite end, these have all been polished and once again protected with deoxic gold. Okay, so when you guys ask me, this is actually my, my bottle's been used quite a bit, you can see, but this is deoxic gold. They're all treated and this is all set. So you can see here that I'm telling you guys. I make little design changes, and the main design changes I make are for ease of use for myself and for my clients. Once again, you can see how this connector is assembled. Like all the others, once you solder on your conductors, your casing will be down the cable, meaning like this for my novices, just to give you a, a visual representation. And then when it's completed, this will be connected. Once again, the connector will be connected to the conductors, and this would just slide up and mate. And in a perfect world, You'll just go back and go forward, and this should allow you to just thread on, just like this. And that's it. And once again, being completely perpendicular with your conductors. That's what we're looking for. So seeing this and seeing how this connector is made differently, I think it's going to help many of you. I will have these available in the store. Um, anybody buying an H, uh, or excuse me, a black HY connector now will get this version. This will definitely, definitely streamline the process. And for those of you learning to solder, this is much easier to work with, once again, than the typical uh, white large HY, because again, of the cup orientation, you can see here, it's diagonal pattern. So we have one, two, three, four, and fours on the bottom, once again, above one. And when that happens, you have problems, once again, correlating those leads. The other one is the H17. And this is a typical over-under soldering pattern. Once again, like I said, you can see here, same, same idea, same principle. So hopefully this will help many of you. And another question I always get is, do you have the male connector end for the black connector? And I do. It's right here. I have some guys that want to change out their connector. That is fine to do. Depending, of course, uh, you, you have the skill set to do that. You can see the size of this. So this is something you definitely want to pay attention to. And you can see the cups on this as well. Over under format. Okay, you have one, two, three, four, and all the way over. So again, not the easiest to solder. Definitely take some practice. Can you switch these out on your spindles? Yes, you can. You would have to bore out the hole to make sure it accepts this. Then you've got the lock nut that simply will screw on and lock this into position, pending your spindle has enough meat and all that good stuff. So before you attempt that, my recommendation is, is really, really take your measurements carefully. But I do also have these in stock if you'd like to purchase one. So I hope that this video has been helpful. Um, if you need a custom spindle cable, um, and I've said this many, many times, but I know right now the uh, the genre is growing so fast. Uh, many guys are still unaware of this. I need to see 
always requesting to see the female connector. And the reason I need to see is because each connector requires a different amount of labor. Okay. If we're dealing with the large H white connector, which is this one, and again, its housing is much larger. You can see that. I'll pull out its silicone boot. I never use these. Uh, they're much too soft. You can see how large that is inside there. And that allows for this cable to come right in. See? So there's no machining here. This makes this connector a little bit easier to assemble in that format, but you can see it still uses the same format of coming in and doing the screw assembly. Um, the big difference is, is that on this, I always go double wall heat shrink twice because this is very wide. So we want to make sure that our stress relief has enough tension on the heat shrink, once again, to give you proper support at the cable connector end. So other than that, and then of course our H17, this naturally housing has to be machined out. And that's why the labor goes up to what it does because until it's machined out, like I said, just like the black connector, it's useless. See how these are small? You can see in there and see the bore diameter. Nothing will fit, meaning our standards or our 16 gauge will not fit through that hole. So it must be opened up. Now, here's one that's been properly machined. You can see how everything has been deburred. And that's something else that a lot of guys don't take into consideration. All this needs to be deburred. Now, why is that? Because like I just showed you, this housing rotates. So if it's rotating around your casing, the last thing you want to do is be basically marring up your casing. We don't want to case any type of exterior casing degradation because we're just, we're not, we're refusing, I should say, to go through and do this properly. All the edges have been filed down, so everything is like butter just slips in and you're golden. So again, guys, I hope that this video has been helpful. It's been more visual to show you what to expect. And once again, why the connectors and uh, cable assemblies cost what they do. Once again, I have guys that'll request a plug cable. And for those of you not understanding what that is, a plug cable means only this half of the cable is completed. A fully assembled cable includes the ring connectors. The other thing a lot of guys do not take into consideration is, and I've said this in previous videos, is these are active cables. What does an active cable mean? Well, it means that it's in movement because most of you are going to put these cables inside of a cable chain. And if that's the case, then what you have to keep in mind is anytime this cable is in movement, your conductors are actually moving. You may not see it, but trust me, they're moving. And that's why this cable is designed in an ultra, ultra flex format with interior cotton separators between its conductors. One of the areas that a lot of guys don't think about is the shield drain right here. And you can see that silicone lead right here. When this cable is moved fore and aft, left and right, that shield drain inside there is moving slightly. Now, depending upon how much the end user flexes the cable and moving and so forth, that will actually move with the cable just like the other conductors. I always cut the shield drain longer so that we make sure that we have some slack because the last thing we want to do is be pulling on a ring connector that's soldered. Okay, the devil is in the details, guys. So when you ask questions about, you know, these cables, how do I assemble them? Well, there's a lot of detail to cover. Where do you want to begin? You know, I guess that's the best way to say it. Writing a quick blurb to me and saying, hey, I, I'm trying to learn how to do this. What do I need to do? Well, where are you at? You know, I, you got to help me with information. I can only provide support based on the, the actual support that I get. So if you don't give me a really good detailed email written properly, um, I get a lot of guys writing on their phone. I can't even articulate half the time what's being written to me. So take the time. Once again, don't do it when you're you know, tired from work or you've got something else on your mind, if you got questions, naturally send them, but send them in a format that makes it easier for me to help you because that's the best support I can give you. All of these cables will take you time to build. If you've never built one, I get a lot of novices asking me, um, you know, how long do you think it'll take me to build one? Well, that's an open-ended question. I really don't know. I don't know your skill set. And if you've never done one, you know, it could be hours, it could be an hour, it could be a half hour. I don't know what you'll accept. This is a client's cable, and this is the only thing I would send out, okay? Everything here is done, once again, to a format that I would use myself, and once again, that would protect the end user. Again, we're really looking at 
how we can build everything in a nice, clean format so that the end user is happy. That's ultimately what we're looking at. So everybody's different. Keep the questions coming. I hope that the video has been helpful. Um, I hope now you guys have a really good assessment as far as what kind of connectors you're dealing with. And I definitely hope this new straight shot connector will help many of you with this black unit from HY. Thank you for your support. Take care.